Martian, Marty, signing in. I am Marty, and welcome back to C++. So in this video, we're going to be optimizing Sublime Text a little bit more for writing C++ code. Because there was a few annoying things with the debugger that was happening. So in this video, we're just going to catch you up, make sure you got the same system that I have. And I figured out a system with Sublime Text that works both on Windows and Linux as well, exactly the same. Which is what we want. We want cross platform compatibility. In other news, I ran this USB through the wash in my pants pocket and it surprisingly works. I thought it was fried for sure, but hey, it works. Now, so far, this is what we have. We've got a source folder, resources folder, include folder, and bin. Inside bin, we got debug and release. And of course, we have our Sublime project and our Sublime workspace. So I'm gonna open up the Sublime project. Now, the first thing I noticed was that on Windows, if you go into bin, and you look for the main, the exe file, you won't be able to find it. By default, Sublime Text disables that. I don't know why. We can always override that because Sublime Text is the most customizable IDE there is. Oh, but Mando, Sublime Text is an IDE. I know, there's, there's always going to be that person who says, Sublime Text is not an IDE. But, I mean, we, we, it's pretty much an IDE here. We have a debugger. We've got folders on the, along the side. We're writing code. That sounds like an IDE to me. So we're going to go preferences and we're going to edit our settings. So you will notice along the side, along the left here, that you should see... So on line 452, you will notice that... I'm going to zoom out a quickie second. That we have file exclude patterns. So this is global. This is across all of Sublime Text. We're disabling .exes, so that's why .exes aren't showing up. DLLs aren't showing up. .o files are not showing up either. So we can fix that by actually just copy and pasting this. Control C and paste it over into preferences. Oh, I already did paste it in there, but anyway, so you paste it in there, it doesn't really matter where, just make sure you have a comma at the end of it and open up some square braces, make sure it is square braces, open quotes, and we can, we're gonna only want to hide everything that is a dot sublime dash project file in that line with a comma, control save. I believe we can close out of this, I think so. Mm. And the awesome thing we wanna close out is the workspace files as well. We don't want to see that. We already got a project file open. No need to have our workspace along the side. That just kind of gets annoying. Stop it. Stop it. So preferences, settings. We got to go back there. And we're going to also disable everything that is... It auto-adjusted something. It'll, by, by default, it's just going to auto-adjust to look like this, to be in this format, which is completely fine. So add a comma there. I think you got to go like this. And then you open up some quotes and you go everything. So that's what the asterisk does. That is a dot sublime dash work space. That should disable it. And if we go control safe, we should be able to close up and it will be disappeared. Now you should have your main.exe along the side, which is kind of nice, and you can see everything that is in your folder. We're also gonna edit up our project file a quick second. So go project, edit project. So before we were having a whole bunch of other paths and files and stuff, but really a way better hack, I guess you could call it. I mean, not technically hacking, but a hack as I call it. Instead of doing all the other junk, you can just go open quotes, path, and then set the path to pick any directory, any of them, doesn't matter. So we're gonna go with source, and then we're gonna go back a directory. So we're gonna go into directory, back a directory. Add a comma, hit enter, and I follow symlinks. I kinda remember what it does, it's honestly not necessary, but follow symlinks, and that needs to be true. So if we save this, oh, I'm not writing C++, I'm writing a JSON file here. So if you save it like that, you'll actually have everything, all the files, everything that is in your project directory. Secondarily, in our build systems for B debug and actually all of them, we can set our working directory to dollar sign and then project underscore path and then close curly brace. So this will just set our working directory equal to the project directory. Why is this useful? Well, before the way we we're doing it is if I clicked on this folder file and I hit F7 and tried to compile it, it wouldn't be able to work because we'd be going off of whichever file it is we have open. We'd be going off of that directory. So same thing for release. We set our working directory to a project path. It just makes more sense. Now, another thing, if you're on Windows or Linux, do not, and I mean do not, have square braces over in the command thing. I think this is mostly just an issue on Windows, is it will only use commands that are in that are environment variables. Why does that? I don't know. I didn't write Windows. I don't understand why. But so this code will work on Windows and Linux, which is what we want. Now in release, we can actually optimize our file size even more by stripping the debugging symbols, which is what dash S does. So be sure it is on the line that links, make sure it's dash S right there. 
Now the final thing we have here is a build system that we can actually output assembler code. And then this way we can actually look at what assembly looks like. How do we go from our code to assembly to machine code? All you have to do is we go create a new build system. So we can actually just copy an existing one, control C and paste it right below it. We're gonna set the name to output assembler code. Now instead of compiling with dash C, we're just gonna go dash capital S which says output assembly code. Now, what is it that we want to turn into assembler code? We would want to have it the file we select, and then we hit F7, turn that only into assembler code. And now instead of asterisks, we can go with a dollar sign, open and close a some curly braces, and we go file underscore base underscore name. So this is the base name of the file. So in this case, it would be like main and then skip the dot CPP. So that is what that would do. And of course, we're gonna take out the optimization flag because I mean, we're gonna be debugging mostly at this point we're not going to be doing any releasing and we would want to add debugging symbols so dash g which will make a bigger file size but it'll actually give us some more debugging info and then take out everything after the two and percents here so you can take out all of that because we don't need it and then all we have to do is go dash o to output it so where we're going to put this we're going to create a directory here so something really cool with sublime text is i mean if you right click on your project folder we can go new folder, name it down here. I'm gonna go ASM, stands for assembly, to enter. And bada bang, bada boom, we got ourselves a new folder. So I really like that. You don't have to actually exit Sublime Text a whole lot. We're gonna output this to the ASM folder and we're gonna call it our base file name. So open up, close some squarely braces, file underscore base underscore name. And then the extension will be .asm. By default, it will be .s, but we're gonna go with .asm because we can rename it to whatever we want. So the last thing we need to change in this project file is you'll notice I've added the line dash i include. What this dash i says, it says, okay, compiler, if you see something in the main CPP file or in any file, any of our C++ files, and it's an include, and you don't really know where that file is, go and check out the include directory, or in this case, we'd be telling the source directory, we don't wanna do that, the include directory. So this way, we don't have to do the dot dot back thing, we can just go add dot HPP, looks nicer, makes more sense. Control save. Before we go any further, I just wanna say in this video, if you're on Windows, you are gonna need the std colon colon c in dot get function, so that, you are gonna need it. If you're on Linux, you won't. I'm running Linux, so I'm gonna take out the line, but if you are on Windows, you're gonna need that stdcn.get line. So, good to go. Something else I noticed that was really getting annoying, let's purposely put in an error and just see what happens. So control save and hit F7. So we get the normal debugging information and then we get all this junk. Like this is junk mail right here. So it's trying to tell us first our debugging info and then it actually tells us where in our project file things break, it tells us what exactly went wrong which is when we try and compile that. But we already know that. We already know it's got an issue with compiling. So we can disable this, fortunately, because this is Sublime Text after all. So go Control Shift P. We're gonna install a package with the package control. Install package R, so resource, package resource viewer. So click that, so go Control Shift P again. Scroll down, you should now have package resource viewer, open resource. So scroll down to see default, and inside there, we're looking for exec.py wherever that is. All right, scroll down to around line two, 300 or something right here, line 364. You can hashtag that out and it disables it. Hashtags in Python is a comment. All right, and that will disable that annoying issue, which is good, that's what we want to happen. So go control save exec.py, you can close out of it. Now, if we take out, again, take out our semicolon on purpose, Control safe and hit F7. It's only gonna tell us the debugging info, which is what we want. So let's put in our semicolon again and hit F7. All right, looking good. Something else I noticed was that these icons look pretty blind and we can actually make things look better with Control Shift P, package control install package. There it is. And search for icons, so icons and file icons is what you want to install. So install it, and when it is done, you should see some pretty nice file icons along the side. And there we go. We got C++, because this is a C++ file along the side. We got some regular files, because it doesn't really know what a .o file is. Looks awesome. All right, and if you want to get the code for this project file, you can actually get that on GitHub. I made a post on GitHub, or is that repository? Don't really know how that works, but. So yeah, with that said, I hope you enjoyed the video. Next video, we're gonna take a look at how C++ works, the way we compile from this human code into assembly, 
into machine code, link it together, and then how does that actually run on our computer? All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have a question or anything to say at all, anything, just let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next video.